This topic has received a lot of global attention over the years. Having supposedly landed on the moon for the first time in July 1969, which is almost 50 years ago, why is it that further manned missions to the moon have never happened after December 1972? A lot of hours and reams of paper have been spent coming up with conspiracy theories that the original Apollo missions to the moon did not happen in the first place and were in fact faked. However, without any prejudice, let's start afresh and explore possible reasons as to why Mission Moon post-Apollo has never taken off. Now just imagine that you had always harbored a dream of going to an exotic vacation destination, which you wish to fulfill at any cost. Having achieved that after a lot of blood, sweat, and money, and explored every inch of that place, would you wish to spend as much money again to go there? I guess your answer would be a clear no. So giving the Apollo missions the benefit of the doubt and assuming that it had indeed landed astronauts on the moon who collected all samples that were needed for further research, why would there be a need for another mission to the moon? It definitely is not the best vacation spot that would have people queuing up to go to. In a way, this is similar to the argument that if the Egyptians could build those marvelous architectural wonders called pyramids in 2600 BC, why can't they do it now, with better technological tools at their disposal? Simply because they don't see the need for the pyramids. Let's get back to our imaginary world. If you were competing with an equally competent colleague for an award being given out for the first time, you toil night and day to prove your worth and ultimately beat him or her to the award. Having achieved the first award, would it really matter if he, or for that matter, somebody else won it the next year? I guess the answer again would be a no. In the 1960s, the US and USSR were the two competing superpowers who perennially were engaged in one-upmanship on virtually all matters, including science and technology. So when USSR beat the US as the first to successfully go to space, it became imperative for the US to be the first to land on the moon, which they achieved after nine tries. So having been there done that, there was no overriding scientific reason for further manned missions to the moon after the Apollo missions. One more reason is that there is no gold to mine on the moon for a refinery to be set up there. What I essentially mean is that it is not exactly cheap money for a mission to the moon without really compelling reasons to justify the same. It is believed that the first mission to the moon cost $25.4 billion to the US, which is the equivalent to around $150 billion in today's monetary terms. So if all that a second mission will achieve is getting a kick from seeing a few guys play football in lower gravity zone, I guess there are enough other scientific causes on Earth where the $150 billion can be better deployed. Besides, with the kind of advances made in satellite and imaging technology, examining the surface of the moon can be done in a cost-effective manner without the need for landing a human on its surface. Apparently, one other reason is that the technology to put up a new mission will also take a lot of time. Robert Frost, who works as instructor and flight controller at NASA, has tried to explain why. He asks an interesting question that why does it take three years to develop a new car model when it shares 90% of the DNA of the earlier model? He answered that question by stating that it is a complex piece of technology. Spacecraft that go to the moon are much more complex and operate at the edge of the technological envelope. There is no room for imprecision or error. The Saturn V rocket has more than three million parts and the lunar module requires a few million more. When the Apollo mission ended, the factories that assembled those vehicles were retasked or shut down. The jigs were disassembled and the engineers, scientists, and flight controllers moved on to other jobs. Over time, some of the equipment has also become obsolete. So to rebuild all that stuff and go back to the moon would be much more than simply pulling out the old blueprints and bending or cutting the metal. 
it will require substitution of some of the old stuff with new material, which in turn means changes in mass, stresses and strains, interactions and possible malfunctions. Essentially, a new vehicle will have to be built and a few years spent redeveloping the expertise, new tests and simulations done, and a new set of rules developed. Having said all this, NASA is in the process of developing the Orion spacecraft that is expected to take humans to the moon and beyond into deeper space. This is expected to be the stepping stone for NASA's manned mission to Mars. Russia is also planning its own manned mission to the moon by 2029, with the initial maiden unmanned flight of its lunar spacecraft scheduled for 2021. Whether all this will materialize as scheduled is anybody's guess. I hope you found this video informative and useful, and I would request you to please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.